everybody, my name is Kyla. Welcome to my channel where I talk about the stock market and the economy, amongst other things. Today, we are going to be talking about AI. Everybody is talking about AI, so but I want to specifically talk about it through the lens of globalization, commodities, and jobs. There was a letter that was published the other day that was signed by people like Elon Musk saying that, hey, listen, we really need AI to slow down. Turns out that letter was actually fake signed by a bunch of people. Then there was this big paper published in Time magazine was like, we should end all AI and do it through kind of violence, which is a whole other thing that I'm not going to touch on. But in the letter itself, they ask these questions where they're like, should we let machines flood our information channels with propaganda and untruth? Should we automate away all jobs, including the fulfilling ones? Should we develop non-human minds that might eventually outnumber, outsmart, and obsolete and replace us? And should we risk loss of control of our civilizations? Such decisions must not be delegated to unelected tech leaders. And I think the concept of propaganda and untruth is confusing cause and symptom. AI is not going to cause more propaganda. AI is going to propagate more propaganda because we already have a huge, huge propaganda propaganda problem. It gets back to society of the spectacle by Guy Debord, where everything is built on the commodification of everything else, where it's the image of images. So of course we have like a bunch of misleading stuff out there. There's even this Wall Street Journal article that was like traditional American values have been declining. But if you look at how they surveyed people, it was because they did a different survey method. Instead of calling people up and asking them what their values were, they allowed people to enter by computer. And people are going to answer differently based on how you survey them. And that gets into something that we've talked about quite a bit on the channel like data is not always reality right like we have to have some sort of hedge in place so that gets to the propaganda and untruth part of that letter we need to back the truck up and fix propaganda we can't blame ai for that the concept of unelected tech leaders is sort of interesting because like tech has already shaped so much of our lives like we have an algorithmic self that's running around the ethers of the internet we all do if you interact with any sort of social media platform and i apologize about the sound it will be fixed very soon i've been moving and traveling and have been, I have no excuses except for the excuse of having an excuse. <laughs> so hang in there with me, the sound will be fixed very soon. I right, thank you for being patient. But going back to like the algorithm itself, right? Like we all have this person that's running on the internet and is interacting with all these various algorithms and we, that's our algorithmic self. Then we have our real self. And so the tech leaders have already been making decisions for us more or less, kind of designing an us that we interact with whenever we log online. The content that we consume shapes us. So basically like all of this already exists and AI is going to exacerbate it, but we can't like be like, this is all AI's fault. Slowing AI down isn't going to stop any of that from happening. It might make it get worse, but we can't point the AI and point it on progress and be like, this is all that the, all that fault. And also there's going to be open source versions of ChatGPT. We can't slow it down is kind of the thing. Like that's the problem. And as many have pointed out, like they were like, we need to develop policy around it. It's like, what do you want policymakers to do? They asked the TikTok CEO if he could hack into home Wi-Fi. Like they don't understand how technology works. They can't even get the debt ceiling, this arbitrary political football across the field. So maybe we should pause on that too. And then like all this globalization is a really important part of this because it ties into this broader discussion around globalization and people losing their jobs and AI eventually turning into this beast that eats us from the inside out. And I want to touch on this. I didn't write about this in the Substack article, but you know, when blue collar works were being outsourced to other countries, you did not see the same sort of uproar that we're getting now from knowledge workers about, you know, losing their jobs to AI. So I think that's just an important thing to highlight is the disparity between white collar and blue collar workers and who is yelling the loudest on twitter.com. I think also there's something to say about financial markets being like growing too quickly, going back to that point about AI moving too fast. Financial markets have grown too fast. They have arguably grown so fast. Markets are five times larger than the global economy and a mid-sized bank that serves a small but loud portion of the population was big enough to topple banking dominoes. So like there's probably something that we should think about there too. There's like a funny comparison here to the industrial revolution, which was touched on in an FT article, but that era was absolutely plain by bank runs, banks were just blowing up left and right, and everyone was like, ah, until the panic of 1907, where JP Morgan just screamed really loud, the Federal Reserve was created, and the financial system was stabilized because of the Fed. But during that industrial revolution time, we had these banks blowing up, and we still had all this progress, we still had all this technological growth, but we cannot have banks blowing up now. So like, that's the difference between now and then, if we think about AI as another revolution, like we cannot have our financial system be as unstable as it is if we want that same level of growth.
or maybe it needs to become unstable. I'm not sure, but I don't think that's the answer. Failure at that level, like if we return back to industrial revolution levels of bank failure, which won't happen, but if we do, it would be catastrophic due to globalization. The issue now though, it's not the banks failing, but rather we went too far to the other extreme side where there's bailout capitalism. Everything is too big to fail because everything is everything. Everything is intertwined. There's no distinction between functions anymore and everything is a risk factor. There's social media risk where if somebody can tweet about it, it's at risk for completely torpedoing into the ground. If you're a regulator, it's really hard to regulate around that. The job of a regulator has become much harder. And although the goal of regulation and support is to make the financial system more stable, that level of bailout really doesn't do it. So like during the industrial revolution, we did not have maybe enough support for the banking system, but now we have maybe a little bit too much support to the point where they're like eating themselves from the inside out. The bailouts really weaken the financial system, the foundation of the financial system, because these wobbly dudes are able to stick around, you know, these zombie companies, these zero rate brethren that all these things should be done and dusted and they create systemic risk when they're not done and dusted. As Michael Pettis said, increased efficiency in the financial system has long ago stopped meaning increased efficiency in allocating capital productively and has meant instead increased efficiency in financial flows. So we don't really see, you know, money being allocated towards things that are good and that good for humanity anymore. We really see it just sort of pushing paper around. The financial system has become this giant warped thing that inadvertently became the snake eating its tail. It's not about building a better future, it's about moving dollars around trying to scrape some semblance of premium. And AI is sort of at risk for exacerbating that too. The OpenAI white paper talks about the risk for connecting GPT-4 to other systems and the example that they provide is if multiple banks can currently rely on GPT-4 to inform their strategic thinking about sources of risk in the macro economy, they may inadvertently correlate their decisions and create systemic risks that did not previously exist. So AI can sort of worsen this financial system interconnection that already has happened, it's, it's here. Right, and AI only expedites that process. And what might be nice, like this isn't necessarily a bad thing, it's just an opportunity for reflection, is we can re-examine our current systems and as we look towards these new ones, like sort of figure out what's going on. SVB should really be a big lesson here. And saying, oops, we probably should have looked closer at that bank that got really giant really fast, it's probably not enough. Like we need to hear like, here's how we'll handle banks that got really giant really fast and we will actually stress test for uh, interest rate risk moving forward, right? So this is a huge aside, but like a whole thread to pull onto around financial speculation and the role that it plays in how our markets function. Like obviously this is the butter on the bread, the fact that people are able to speculate creates liquidity and it creates incentives and it keeps things moving and grooving, but it also like, you know, caused the Arab Spring, for example, right? So I think that we really need to sit back and think about how the financial markets function, especially as AI takes over and think about what's net good and net bad, objectively speaking, for the people that it's meant to be serving. Well, let's get into jobs. I think that there's still a good argument to be made around jobs uh, taking, or I think there's still a good argument to make around jobs being taken away by AI. I was at Publix conference yesterday. I talked a little bit about this on this panel that I was on. You know, nails were once 0.5% of GDP. So I think technology is always taking away jobs, right? But just because it taketh doesn't mean it doesn't giveth. <laughs> uh, I don't. I think that we will see new jobs and we will see new productivity from AI. But this technology is is different, right? Like it's it's, it's not a nail. It's kind of scary. The technology isn't making cars. It's making thoughts and art and doing things that humans do. And that anthropomorphization. How do you like that word? Is kind of scary. And this is going to sound super goofy, but this really requires us. I've had so many good conversations with a lot of my friends recently about like what it means to be a human. And this requires us to sit back and be like, what does it mean to be a sentient being? What does it mean to operate the way that we do? Is AI going to have feelings and all that stuff? And I, I don't think it will, but that's just my opinion. About half of my friends think it's already alive. I think that maybe if we can just figure that out, like that would be kind of interesting if AI gets anxiety about the future, since that seems to be a distinctly human quality, like chimps don't get anxious about the future, but humans do. Like maybe that is how we decide if AI is human. I asked ChatGPT4, I don't pay for premium, so who knows, but I, I was like, are you anxious about the future? And I was like, no, I'm an AI model. So it's not a human quite yet based on, based on that evaluation function. So commodities, I've been writing about commodities quite a bit in the book that I'm writing. And I think this is the thing that I get really stuck on with AI and like 
crypto in general. You know, it's great. I think that technology is awesome, obviously, but we live here on Earth <laughs> and there's a world where AI helps us to manage our crops and sow our corn and the perfect temperature and provides perfect water, but AI is linked to a grid, right? Like AI requires massive computational power and GPUs puffing away, and that is a risk. Like we need real food. We can't like go to AI and be like, can you make me this food? It can make us a grocery list, but right now it cannot cook anything for us or grow crops. We need copper and steel and wheat and corn and lumber. And I think that's just a good thing to remember as we talk about these technologies. Things like agricultural tech are super important. Education is still super important. Would love to see VCs investing there. Supply chains are super important. The maintenance of the real world outside the vast indie void of the internet is important. The dollar, so like there's been a bunch of stupid tweets about the dollar recently, just a bunch of very dumb takes. If you see somebody doing a tweet thread about the dollar, right, like get rid of them. This argument recycles every couple months and I have read, I wrote about this back in April, 2022, just to give you an idea of how often it comes up. It's a hairball that never really quite makes it down the drain. So I wrote about it, you know, it's this dollar facing its downfall, kind of. There's a paper from the IMF called the stealth erosion of the dollar. And the main takeaway is no, the dollar is not going away, but yes, there is a new little basket of currencies that people are investing into. And this makes sense considering deglobalization and domestic protectionism and off offshoring, onshoring. Um, we're not always going to be super reliance on the dollar, but it's definitely not going to be one. <laughs> that is not transparent and nobody wants to deal with it. So like this has been happening for a while. There isn't a big currency that's going to take its place, but yeah, the dollar is losing an element of status, but it's still reserve currency. When you see people tweeting this stuff, just write them off. Like they're trying to sell you a newsletter. Anybody who speaks in absolutes is living like in a fragmented reality that, uh, based on their own narcissism. So just ignore them. As Bob Elliott says, use on the dollar future role as the lead global reserve currency differentiates serious experienced macro folks from those who are tourists and disconnected luminaries. The dollar isn't going anywhere anytime soon, it's wasteful to spend time worrying about it that much. So please, spend your precious, beautiful time here on Earth worrying about something other than the status of the dollar. Yeah, some final thoughts. There's this beautiful book called Medusa and the Snail by Lewis Thomas, and he talks about like how mistakes are what make us human. I just really recommend that book, it's very beautiful. and. Lichen, I think that lichen are really cool as we're talking about AI, like that they're kind of the original connectors, you know, and there is a really neat thing about them. Here's the quote, living reminders that the supreme vital force of life is not competition, but interdependence that we survive and thrive not through combat, but through collaboration. So sorry if you can hear the construction outside. It's always doing something. I guess that's good for the economy that they're doing construction outside. Well, hope you all are doing okay. I'll talk to you very, very soon. This is a podcast newsletter. I'm on TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, everywhere that you need me. Hope you all are doing okay. Talk to you very soon. Goodbye.